Hi, everyone. Oh, no. Welcome to the podcast that I'm really regretting is video format today. I just, I have hair for radio. Let's be honest. I have hair for radio. Welcome to But Did You Die with the Jet Sisters. I'm Angie Orth. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about my hair. I feel like every piece of content I've put out in the past week has been, I'm so sorry about my hair. You, you're giving alfalfa right now. Like what a- happened to you? You look like a peacock. I don't know. I'm so sorry, everyone. Here we are. Rachel, it's your turn to be beautiful this week. Sorry that we're butt ugly, everyone. <laughs> I thought I was putting effort in, so yikes. Happy first week of spring. The sun is shining. It is beautiful. The sun is up until 830. I love it. Um, hey, I'm really excited. And you've probably already noticed already, listener, that I sound so much better than I usually do. Uh, got a new microphone. Thanks for that, sis. How did you? How did it arrive to your house? Tell everyone what your big sis did for you. By FedEx? <laughs> no. I mean, On a magic carpet? I, I don't know. I bought it and sent it to you and it was a surprise. It was. Well, I did ask her you to do that and then you did. But <laughs> Okay. It was a surprise. It was a surprise. To, to me, so far, it still kind of sounds like you're in a bucket, but this is a work in progress. What is this? Episode 12? We're figuring it out, you guys. And I think we're doing pretty well, considering we have no idea what's going on here. You sound great all the time. I never sound good. So I hope this is a step up. Maybe it's the room. Maybe there's an echo in here. Whatever. We'll figure it out. Whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. Happy first week of spring. I think it's hilarious and very Florida, very on brand that it's been like 90 degrees all these last weeks of winter. And the first day of spring, it was in the high 30s in the night and I was freezing. Like, what is that? What what kind of hilarious joke is that, Florida? Come on. That's definitely a Florida thing. Um, I don't think I told you this. Our air conditioning broke. What? And the... The second night, it was broken. Like we were when we realized it was the cold night, the one cold night. Like hallelujah! And then someone came out and fixed it, so we're back to normal. But I am Better so happy now than midsummer. So happy that it was not hard to do. All right, all right. Let's talk travel news. What you I got forgot. for us this week, right? I don't remember. What was it? Um, a pilot. Um, shows up to fly the plane, goes through the security, has his uniform on, the badge, everything. He's got too much liquid in his bag, so they they flag it, they take it. It's two bottles of Jaeger, and I think one is, like, half empty. And he was twice the legal alcohol limit for, for pilots. So he just got sentenced. 10 months. What is the legal limit for a pilot? I would hope it was not a, any. Should like, be zero. Yeah, we should be having no drinks, folks. But I get it, Jaeger, you know? He's trying to no, get the party started. Know. He's trying to no. get the flight go. No? I don't like any of this. So, no. yeah, okay. Flying is statistically safer than driving. And that's why you have two pilots. In case one of them gets rip roar and wasted on Jaeger, the other one is probably all right. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's why. Being a pilot is an incredibly stressful job. Like, we don't really see what they do or what goes on, but it seems like it would probably be a pretty stressful job. So maybe we'll have to have our friend Nick, the pilot, on someday to tell us about the stress of his job. He could be, like, our our special guest. I bet he's not allowed to do that. Oh, I would just die. I would just die. This podcast where Rachel's constantly like, traveling sucks. I hate flying. (laughs) It's all in good fun. Hey, obviously we're going to get on flights every chance we get. Tomorrow. Literally, I got to go to Dallas tomorrow. So I hope Nick's my pilot. That would be so cool. He will be here next week. So we could have him as a special guest. (laughs) He will be in my house. Um, All right. Well, the good news is there was no crazy, crazy travel news. So in fact, I did find a drunken pilot story. So... No planes falling out of the sky this week. But uh, let's uh, let's jump into our topic of the week. 
Destination of the week. You guys are going to like this one because we like this one. It's a fun one to talk about. Where are we going this week, Ray? We are going to the Florida Keys. I just love the Keys. And every time I go there, I say, why don't I come here more? It's like a five-hour drive. Why do I not come here all the time? Is yeah. it a five-hour drive? Well, it's like, it's like a five-hour drive to the beginning of them. It's like an eight-hour drive to Key West. So yeah. I don't want to say the beginning of the Keys and the end that you can drive. It's like a three-hour kind of amazing road trip journey. But yeah, just to kind of get in the neighborhood, it's about five or six hours, which um, is, it's that's nothing. I'm checking now. Oh, why does it say three days? That's walking. <laughs> okay. From Orlando to Key West, it's seven hours. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Like, you're just down there in no time. Plus, you can fly. You can also fly to straight to Key West. Like I And I would recommend that. If you're staying in Key West and not exploring the rest of the Keys, fly. For those who don't know about where the Keys are, you see Florida. And then under Miami, there's a chain of islands. And those are the Florida Keys. There are how many keys? Oh, there's a quiz with no answer key? I don't know. <laughs> That's rude. Um, I don't know how many keys there are. There's quite a lot. Uh, there's at least four. There's at least like 400. There's so well, many. That can, well, that I can name. Oh, I could name so many. Name them. Key West. Isla Marana. Marathon. Mm -hmm. Marathon. Duck K Duck Key. Yeah, Duck Key. Duck Big Pine Key. Big Pine Little key. Big Pine Key. Sure. Deer Key. Far Deer. Far Largo. Key Largo. <laughs> Fargo. <laughs> Fargo Key Largo. Yes. Um, yeah, but that's just a few of them. So you and then there's they're all connected by <clears throat> one long road. So you 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 leave Miami. You start at Marathon? Sure. That's, that's the top of the key, and then you can drive all the way to Key West. Um, and there's lots of lots of things to do in all of these places. I think Key West is probably the most popular. Um, but, no, there's hotels, there's fishing charters, there's a couple beaches, spas, many things to do on the Keys. I think specifically we're going to talk a little bit about Key West today. So, first things first, how do we get there? If you're oh, from Florida, sorry. you can drive. I mean, if you're in Florida, just drive on down there, then you've got your vehicle to get around. Uh, if you're not from Florida, uh, or if, say, you're from Jacksonville or the Panhandle, somewhere that it's more of a hike to get there, you can drive. I mean, you can take a pretty quick flight to Key West, and then you're just there. Once you're in Key West, you can walk, Uber. There's little trolleys that get you around. You can run a bicycle or a scooter. Um, so that's easy. But if you are going, you know, trying to fit in all of the keys in a trip, you're going to need wheels. Keep that in mm -hmm. mind. And you can also fly into the Miami airport. But then, yes, rent a car. Then you need wheels. All right, so we made it to the keys. What do people do when they get there? What? Don't people do when they get to the Keys? We've Holy been a couple crime. times. <laughs> this is not a oh, crime. That's a rhetorical question. Okay. <laughs> now, um, we've gone a couple times. One of my favorite things to do is the Fury excursion, Fury Water Sports. So it's this 65 foot catamaran that takes you jet skiing, snorkeling, parasailing, and then to an inflatable water park in the middle of the ocean. So you get on the boat, go to the middle of the ocean, and then just do all of your activities for a day. I freaking love that. That's my favorite thing. Because I love swimming and being in the water. That's, you know that's my favorite part was about the day with Fury is that Mom did so, in fact, our whole trip to the Keys, but that day specifically, mom did so many things that she normally would be like, I'm not doing any of that. She went parasailing, she went jet skiing, and she was out there goofing around on the inflatable water park. Goofing around? She almost drowned. She did? You remember? Remember she's just laughing at us at the water park and like cannot swim because she's laughing so hard. You don't remember that? 
I I remember getting pulled up onto the thing and it almost ripping my oh, yeah. chestal region oh, yeah. off. So I was still traumatized. But was mom like wearing a life jacket and just like floating away, but laughing so hard? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. it, it's so the middle. proud because she did all these things that she wouldn't normally do. She, it was fun. I don't know if I will parasail again. I've seen too many videos now of people getting stuck under the water that I think I'm good. Um, but the, the inflatable stuff was so fun. There's it's like, like rock climbing. You can go down. You jump off and. Yeah. That was great. So I really enjoy Fury. And there's um, food. Afterwards, there's like food and drink on there. There's lunch and stuff. It's a whole day out on the water. And we did that again. Did we not? We did that for your bachelorette party? We did not. We no. For, did. for a bachelorette, we did um, kayaking on one of the Keys. Or was it in Key West? That was Key West. Okay. Yeah, we went We went kayaking. You can go stand up paddle boarding. We did the um, dolphin cruise. Do you remember that? Yeah, the eco cruise where you you yes. go around and you look for the dolphins. Like you don't go find, you don't go to them, you don't feed them, you don't touch them, but they come up. Oh, that was amazing. That was cool. We saw so many dolphins. Loved that. Um, there are like food walking tours. So if you're a big foodie. Um, oh yeah, remember we went to that Cuban restaurant. We got to try all this key lime pie and conch fritters. Oh, they have such good food in Key West. Yes, Key Lime Pie, Key West, go hand in hand. That's where Key nope. Limes come from. I feel like people don't necessarily realize that, but that's where the Key Limes come from. That's why you can only get real Key Lime Pie in the Keys. So you, ha you have to eat it everywhere you go, every time. It's Yeah, that's freaking amazing. Um, you can visit Ernest Hemingway's house, where on the property are famous six-toed cats, there's just cats everywhere and, and you can walk in and that's, that's pretty cool. I don't know if you've traveled a lot, you see a lot of signage and bars. That's like Hemingway drank here, but it's even in places that he absolutely did not. Cause it's just kind of the joke, you know, it's like Hemingway was everywhere. Hemingway really did live in the keys and right there and fish. And he was the ultimate, you know, like manly man in the sea. So that checks out. If you, um, if you're a Hemingway fan. Robbie's on, that one's not in Key West. That's on Isla Mirada. Mm -hmm. um, Robbie's is super cool. It's like a restaurant, but also you can feed tarpon and you hang That's over. Tell our a friends what a tarpon is. It's a fish. How big is it's, a fish? It's pretty big fish. You hang over a dock with fish and you just put the fish over the water. And they come up and they like put your whole arm in their mouth. So that's fun. Uh, but that's a staple. If you're driving, especially if you fly into Miami or you're driving all the way through, you have to stop at Robbie's, get lunch, get a beer, feed the tarpon, and then also, keep going. Also kayak there. You can rent, I think, jet skis. They have all sorts of tours that go out of there. There's really good souvenir shopping in that little area. There's plenty of parking. Um the restaurant is called the Hungry Tarpon, and mm -hmm. the bar is the Thirsty Tarpon. So easy to remember, but there's a lot to do there. So that's a good spot, especially if you're coming, if you're driving down. That is a really good place to either stop for the night or stop for a few days on Isla Mirada on the way to Key West. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, love it. Always stop there. It's so fun. Um, there's Dante's. Do you not remember? Uh, I remember. <laughs> Which is great for bachelorette parties or bachelor parties, which is where I, we went to Key West for my bachelorette party. Um, it was a lot of fun. It's a huge pool. It's just a big party. It's a giant pool. Um, that's it. And a DJ. And there are a hundred people in the water and they're all in a bachelor or bachelorette party. That's that. Enjoy. Or not. I think they have food too. Don't they have food? I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> they have food. Okay. So also in Key West, one of the big things is the sunset. Like that is the thing everybody does every day. So where should people go see the sunset? On a boat. A boat's On good. Boat. Who's Mom boat? How and when? 
don't know. Find a boat, people. What am I, your travel go guide? Look west and look at the sun, dummies. Okay. Let me take know. over. <laughs> so there are two really good ways to see the sunset in Key West. I mean, maybe three ways. One is go outside and look at the sun. Look at the sun. <laughs> two, don't look directly at the sun. Come on, we've been over this. Two is go to Mallory Square, which is where they have all sorts of, what are they called, buskers and vendors and performers and stuff. So people are like juggling and doing magic shows, but also that's the little Western part of the island where everybody goes to watch the sunset. Um, and then the third thing, which I highly recommend, is to do a sunset cruise. Ah, they have like Adar, sorry, hold on. Just, your dog just flew. <laughs> Yeah. Golly. Okay. The third thing I would recommend is a sunset cruise because you, you get a bit more space to yourself. You're on a catamaran or a sailboat or something. Um, and there's food and there's cocktails and there's music. And so it's a little more chill than just being in the, in the crowd of Mallory square. Cause that can get kind of, kind of crowded and noisy, which is fun too. I think do all of the things every night you're there, go find somewhere to do it. But sunset is a huge deal in mm -hmm. Key West. We talked a little bit about food, but I do want to specifically mention the best steak I've ever had in my life. I ate this steak 10 years ago, and I still have the picture of it on my phone. It was so good. So if you're in Key West, you have to... Latitudes. Latitudes. You have to go to Latitudes. It's take a boat to get there. It's on a little island. Steak mm. on an island where they have no cows. I don't know why it's the best steak I've ever had. I don't either. Because every time we've gone together, I haven't been able to go. Either we haven't had a reservation for the right time or they booked us in for brunch instead, which brunch was good too. But I've never had this magical steak and I'm so nervous that I'm going to try it and it's not going to be that good. I mean, it was, it's been other, 10 years, so anything could happen. Other places in Key West that you absolutely have to eat. At the Perry Hotel, which is where we stayed for Rachel's bachelorette party. It's just on the other, like, just off of Key West. But they have a free shuttle that takes you in and out as much as you want. Um, but they have Matt's Stock Island Kitchen and Bar. And I know Rachel's not a huge seafood eater. So any seafoody place is kind of lost on her. But we were extremely pumped about, they bring you this tackle box full of seafood. And it's just beautiful. It's just brimming with like shrimp and oysters and huh, so many yummy things. So, oh, crab claws, stone crab claws. Do you know what a delicacy that is? Huh. Anyway, do you, sorry. Do you remember, I'm having a memory flashback when we, the whole family went, Ben didn't go, which was sad, yeah. but it was the series finale of Game of Thrones and no one in our family watched it but us. And we made everyone like stop what they were doing. We stayed in. We made everyone watch the last episode, which was so disappointing. And the whole time, our brother is going, this sucks. <laughs> we're like, this is dumb. And we're like, oh, you don't understand. You don't understand what we've been through. And we're like, no, it's fine. It's fine. I do. He was right. That. It was, he was right. It did suck. Anyway, back to the keys. That's just the core memory now of every time I think of the keys, I'm thinking of Game of Thrones. Um, a funny. and B Lobster House. That was I delicious. remember. I remember y'all freaking out about lobster. That was delicious. Yeah, there's a lot of good food in Key West. And obviously seafood is huge because it's fresh. But you can also get cow flown in if you need it. <laughs> there's cows. There are cows. Look for a cow. I could find a, I could find a cow right now if I really wanted to. On Key West, you could find a cow? Maybe. That's what I'm talking about. I don't think so, bro. If you can but drive to the seems... you can bring a cow. I didn't say bring your own cow. I said there's a cow on Key West living there that you could eat. Yeah, right. I don't believe you. Let's you don't know about gonna... agriculture. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to consult <laughs> with our friends at the Key West Visitors Bureau and we'll find out if there are any cows in town. Doing it right now. Farm. Okay. There's not a farm on Key West. There's a plant there's store. Grass. There's not really a lot of grass and there's not really a lot of beaches. That's another thing people don't necessarily know about the Keys 
That's exactly, that was what I wanted to talk about next. Okay. You're thinking, you're thinking tropical destination, Florida beaches. The Keys, yes, not really known for beaches. If you're looking for a beach, you're going to struggle. This is more get on a boat, go swimming, do an activity, explore. But beaches, I don't think I've ever been to a beach in the Keys. Sure. There are beaches. There are a few. They exist. Um, it's just not necessarily like if you've never been there, you might have it in your mind that they're just these beach ringed islands. And that's not really true. It's mostly like limestone. And, um, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of water-based activities that you would want to do, you should get on a boat first and then hop off that boat. But there are definitely a couple of places that have beaches. And like when we stayed at Hawks K, they have this sandy lagoon. So it's not a beach per se, but it's a, enough of a beach and you can stand up paddleboard there and there's the pool and there's a quiet pool and, you know, all, all the things, all the creature comforts. Um, I think Chica Lodge also has mm -hmm. a pretty decent beach. You are right. I'm remembering staying there and there was a beach. Um, also a bathtub that had uh, the water coming from the ceiling. That was great. Magical. You know who's oh. who's at Chica Lodge right now? Who? Aunt Ev. Rick's, Rick's aunt and uncle. Yeah. I told them about Chica Lodge like a thousand years ago and now they go like once a year, which I love that. I love that journey for them. I had one of my favorite massages ever at Chica Lodge and it was a tiger shell massage and they filled it with some kind of hot something and then massage you with these like smooth shells transcendent another level i i would go do look i could get in a car and be there in six hours why I'm, am i here i'm kind of why thinking am I about here? it um <laughs> the keys the key is also near three national parks first one yeah. you're near the everglades the second one uh, i always forget what it's called don't tell me i don't know it's the one that you have to either take the ferry a couple hours or you can take a oh, seaplane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I took the seaplane years ago. Dry Tortugas. Dang it, I told you not to tell me. Oh, yeah. I missed that part. Well, yeah, the Dry Tortugas National Park, uh, super cool. It's an old, huh, it's an old fort, obviously. It's a fort in the middle of the ocean and you can camp there overnight and that is on my bucket list. You keep saying the ocean. It's not the ocean. It's the sea. I just had to say that. It's not like the Atlantic Ocean. I know what you're saying, like figuratively, it's like the ocean, but it's it's the sea. The ocean the sounds scary and deep. The Caribbean Sea, the the Gulf of Mexico, that's just like more friendly. I'm just saying. That's the same thing. The sea and the ocean are the same thing. Is the Caribbean Sea the same thing as the Atlantic Ocean? I can get there. I can swim to one <laughs> or the other. I I know you think you can swim really far, but you can't. It's all connected. It's the, it's the ocean. So you're just like, it's a bot. You're in a body of water. And it doesn't well, matter. if I'm in a lake, that's not the ocean. You got to think here, pal. If you're in the Gulf of Mexico, that's not the ocean. That's it's just what it's Gulf. called. Also right, the ocean. That's what it is. <laughs> it just happens to have that name. Because it's the Gulf. <laughs> you're being dumb. You're being obtuse. <laughs> well, you're a mother. Um, anyway, yeah. So the Dry Tortugas National Park is in the sea. There you go, buddy. The sea Grow is beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, lots to do, lots to eat. Uh, if you're looking for places to stay, we'll put some recommendations in the show notes. Ange has lists. I think we could probably tell folks about the best time to visit because as Floridians... <laughs> I don't personally take hurricane season into account when planning my travels because it's just part of life when you're growing up in Florida or on the ocean of the Gulf of Mexico or whatever you want to call it. Grow up. Uh, you grow up. <laughs> <laughs> hurricane season is May to November-ish, and that keeps a lot of people... Oh, no? Oh, it's May? Okay. Isn't that starting like... August? Hurricane season? What state are you from? It literally starts in May. 
No, it doesn't. Yeah. Look it up. There's never been a hurricane in May. I'm so glad you're so prepared for this. Who is the meteorologist of this family? You're so... They're a liar. Okay, look it up. Okay, you continue. Add I'm going to Google. Add it to your list of things you have to fact check that I'm right about. So, hurricane season is the whole summer and part of fall. Well? June. June what? First. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Basically May. So, and you're probably lying anyway. No, it's June. Well, it says the worst month is August, September, October. That is hurricane season. Okay, but that's hurricane season in your heart. Hurricane season in science is a lot longer than that. Okay? It has a lot to do with science, Rach. I'm not going to get into it right now, but there's a lot to do with the way the earth is tilted and the sun and Shut gravity. up. Shut up. Listen, if you want to go to the Keys in May, that's a great idea. Go. Don't if you want to go to the Keys. Hurricane. If you want to go to the Keys in August, go for it. But what do I say every episode? What do I say every episode? Travel insurance is your friend because that will get you out of paying for a hotel. That will get you won't have to deal with a whole bunch of baloney. It will all be handled if there is a natural disaster. So don't go anywhere without your travel insurance, especially not during hurricane season. Um, you know, you can always leave if a hurricane is coming. That's the fun thing about hurricanes as a natural disaster is you have some warning usually that they're coming and you can just leave versus like earthquakes. You're just okay. Out of luck. You're, you're, you've, you've turned a corner. When is the best time to visit the Keys? Anytime. September 7th tends to be great in our family for hurricanes. Winter is lovely. Winter yeah. is usually really temperate. But again, high season is always going to be the most expensive. Mm -hmm. And the hottest. I, I, and super, it can be very hot. Um, it usually depends. A lot of times it's hotter on mainland Florida than it is in the Keys because you get these amazing breezes. Um, so it's... Like like anything, it's kind of a crapshoot. But go yeah. whenever. It's fine. Listen, that's pretty much my advice for everything. Just go and see what happens. Oh my Good gosh, is this why I keep finding myself in <laughs> problems? All right. Well, it wouldn't be. But did you die with the Jet Sisters? If we didn't talk about the thing that almost killed us. So, what was your disaster on our Keys trip? And I'm I'm picking the family Keys trip, but I guess it could be. Family, it could be bachelorette party, it could be that press trip you went on, and I don't know if you've been oh. any other times. Well, here's an overlapping one. The family trip and the press trip, the same thing happened to me. I got heat stroke so bad that I had to stay in the hotel and not do anything. So on the family trip, I missed the deep sea fishing because I was toast. Which I still am not totally convinced. Sometimes Rachel gets sick when there's family events to do like Christmas okay that's stupid and you're stupid um and then the, the press trip we we rode bikes down the seven mile bridge oh yeah yeah which is another activity uh and it was hot and that night I was like well I'm done um so heat stroke almost died two times so don't don't do that that was my that was my disaster which will lead me into Drink a lot of water. Super important. Wear sunscreen. Just so you guys know, as a you know, point of reference, when when everyone visits Florida, we know you're not from here because it's Monday, so you've been here a day or two, and you are the color of like the rental sport vehicles. It's not good for your skin. You can't wear too much sunscreen. Please. You will get sun poisoning the first day and then have to stay inside. Yeah, and take it easy on the booze. Because, little known fact, there's something about the science of the Florida Keys that makes you think you're not drinking as much as you are. So, be cool. I don't know. That's not my travel tip. Okay. My travel tip is drink more Jaeger. Unless, unless you're, you're the pilot. <laughs> well, uh, all right. He was just going to the keys. That's all. He was just <laughs> exactly. For he was a gaming. Keys. 
Um, All right, sis, what are you doing this weekend? I'm going to the Dallas Travel Show with Traveling with AAA, my other podcast. And I'm going to be doing some interviews and I'm going to be talking to some people and making some content for the AAA team and hanging out with friends and hopefully seeing people and, and signing some books. So come Fun. see me if you're in Dallas. Oh, well, you won't because this doesn't come out till I'm gone. I am going to Daytona Beach because several years ago, I bought Ben for Valentine's Day a tiki crew, like a tiki sunset cruise. And it got postponed. Fast forward four years later, and we are finally doing it this weekend. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. That's That'll be cool. Be fun. Yeah. Are you staying We're, overnight or just going we, home? We are. So, yeah, Sunset Cruise, we'll do that. That's a couple hours. And then we're staying at the Hard Rock Hotel. Get out of here. That looks so nice. I'm very excited. What so, are you look doing for with dogs? hopefully giving them to Janice. <laughs> I have not asked her yet, but thanks, Janice, for taking the dogs, probably. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be fun. So look for a video on Off Day Adventures for that mini staycation. That's fun. You guys are going to have a blast. That's all the time we have for today. So um, thank you for tuning in, everyone, to But Did You Die with the Jet Sisters. We'll be back next week with another episode. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs>